All right, the next topic we're looking at is the analysis and interpretation of financial and non-financial information. Okay, so ratio analysis. Now, what's important, guys, for the level ones, this will definitely be tested in MAC 4861. But for the level twos, please note, it can still be tested in MAC 4862. And in 2015, it was tested in MAC 4862, actually in paper one, the costing paper, they did test it. But predominantly, please note that it will be tested in FAC 4864 just so you know where to see this coming up in your exams. It could be in 4862, MAC 4862, but it could also be in FAC 4864, and that's mainly where you are going to see it. Okay, so just to cover a few of the obvious, ratios are obviously not going to be given to you, so you have to memorize the ratios. You have to study all of your ratios. Also, when we're calculating ratios in practice, it's the norm to use averages. So we use average debtors, average inventory, etc. However, for the purposes of this course, you can use closing balances unless otherwise told. So if they tell you to use average balances, obviously use average. But if the question is silent, you can use closing balances. Closing balances of inventory, closing balance of debtors, closing balance of creditors. Don't work out averages. Also, when you're working out debtors days, inventory days, accounts payable days, etc., it's safe to assume that there's 365 days in the year unless you're told otherwise. And you need to know which headings the ratios fall under because this information is not going to be provided to you. So first, you need to learn all of the ratios. And in addition to learning all of the ratios, you need to know what headings the ratios fall under. Now, if we go to the ratios I've given to you guys. So what I've done as a separate handout over here, guys, I've included all of the ratios that you need to study for your exam. Now, I'm obviously not just going to read these to you. That would be completely pointless. You guys need to go and you need to study. These are all the ratios. First, we get profitability ratios. These are all the ratios that fall under profitability. Okay? These are my capital structure and solvency ratios. Those are the ratios that fall under that heading. These are my liquidity ratios. Those are the ratios that fall under that heading etc etc so i've got all of the ratios there for you guys it's updated based on the most recent textbook please don't use any other formulas because this has changed recently so don't use any other formulas that you got from anywhere else these are the most updated ratios and these are the ratios that you need to want you to use okay so there are sometimes different variations on how things can be calculated for your unisa purposes for your unisa cta exam these are the ratios that you study and these are the ratios that you provide them with Okay, so know the headings, know which ratios fall under the headings, know all of the formulas. So instead, I want to focus, rather than just reading through the list of all of the ratios to you guys, you need to study that stuff, I just want to focus on giving you an approach for the exam. Okay, so this is one of the places, guys, where you really should be able to score maximum marks. If you've studied your formulas, it is easy okay so this is really an easy section there's no excuse for getting at least 75 percent if not a hundred percent for ratio analysis okay it is very basic including the discussion i will show you how to address the discussion it's very easy one of the most important things that you need to remember when you're doing all of those ratios is you use book do not use book values you use market values in your calculations so obviously, if you're looking at profitability ratios and you're working at things like gross profit percentage and net profit margin, et cetera, there you can't use market values. I'm talking about where you have to work out return on equity. You use the market value of equity, not the book value of equity. When you work out your gearing ratio, you use the market value of debt and equity. You do not use book values. So where possible, guys, you must use market values. If you use book values, you will get zero. Okay, I can't emphasize that, like, honestly, this, you must be seeing stars coming out of your head. And if you think you're going to forget this, like, bump yourself on your head a few times. Honestly, do not forget this. If you forget this, you will fail the ratio question, and it's one of the easiest questions. You can't afford to lose marks in this question, so don't make a stupid mistake by taking book values. You must use market values. Okay, I think I've emphasized that enough. Hopefully, it's now stuck there. Okay, don't use book values. Then what the required sometimes does is it doesn't say look at the profitability or look at capital structure or look at liquidity. Sometimes they don't actually tell you what heading you're focusing on. Sometimes they just say evaluate the performance. 
And then how do you know there's like 50 different ratios? How do you know which ratio you must look at if they just say evaluate performance and it's open ended like that? So what do you do? You look at what they've given you. Normally, if they just say evaluate performance, they've probably only given you the statement of profit and loss and other comprehensive income. And if they've only given you the statement of profit and loss, you are forced to then obviously focus on profitability. If they only give you the statement of financial position, then you can only focus on things like capital structure, etc. Okay, so calculate whatever you can based on the information supplied. And also, how do you know how many ratios to calculate? How do you know when to stop? Please let the mark allocation guide you. Okay, now a common complaint that I get from my students is they'll say, it's a 10 mark ratio question, but it took me an hour to do the question. Okay, but remember, if you're looking at the UNISA solution, the UNISA solution is a model answer, and it has to include every single ratio that every student would have calculated to make it fair. So if it's a 10 mark question, what you can go on, guys, is normally it's one mark per ratio, and if you have to calculate both years, it's normally only half a mark. So if you are being awarded, and they tell you in the question, 10 marks for calculation, 20 marks for discussion. If they tell you that it's 10 marks for calculations, you should not be doing more than 10 ratios. If you're doing 20 or 50 ratios, you're never going to finish your paper. So please use this as a guide so that you know what to do. This is one case where you aren't trying to look the same as the UNISA solution, because the UNISA solution is going to have 100 available marks, and you only need 10. Okay. So don't get stuck on the question. When you run out of time, you move on to the next part of the question. Don't get stuck answering and doing 50 different ratio calculations. Okay, one mark per ratio, if you're calculating both years, it's about half a mark for each one. Sometimes they're lenient and they make it one mark for each year, but normally it's half a mark for each year. Okay, so they're very strict with these. Let the mark allocation guide you. Then, this is where people now normally struggle is most of them are quite happy with the calculation. Okay, if you're not happy with the calculation because you haven't studied your ratios, then you don't deserve to be sitting in CTA. So that I've got no sympathy for you. There you must study your formulas. Okay, if you don't study, you're going to fail. Study your formulas. Then, in terms of the discussion, this is the approach that you guys need to follow. First thing that you are going to do is you're going to interpret the ratio, which means you're going to tell the examiner what the ratio means. Now, often there's no marks in the mark plan for interpretation. So, for example, if it's profitability and you've worked out the movement in revenue, there is not going to be a mark on the mark plan for saying the movement in revenue is the movement in revenue because the movement in revenue is the movement in revenue. So, over there, there won't be an interpretation mark. The same as if you have to calculate gross profit percentage. There's not going to be an interpretation mark. Gross profit percentage is gross profit percentage. However, if you have to work out your receivables collection days, there is most likely going to be a mark for you saying that this ratio indicates on average how long it takes debtors to settle their accounts. Or if you have to work out the gearing ratio, the gearing ratio tells me the percentage of debt that the company has in their capital structure. Because then you're telling me something. You're not saying the gearing ratio is the gearing ratio. You're saying the gearing ratio tells me the amount of debt the company has. Okay, so if it is a complex ratio that you can interpret, please interpret it. If not, if it's profitability ratios, normally the profitability ratios you don't really interpret. They're too simple. Okay, so this normally is where minimum marks will lie. The bulk of your discussion marks, and I promise you, you can score 100% of the marks if you just focus on these two points over here. And number two is so easy. You are going to compare it to a benchmark, which means either you're going to compare it to the same ratio of a competitor company, of a similar listed company, you're going to compare it to an industry average, you're going to compare it to the prior year, but you are going to compare it to something. And it makes sense, guys, because if I have nothing to compare it to, how do I know if it's good or not? Okay. So the reason why I compare it to a benchmark is so that I know. Is it good? Is it not good? Etc. Compare it to a similar company, compare it to an industry average, compare it to the prior year. And then you need to use the right terminology.
Okay. Then you must use the correct terminology. So what I mean over here is you can't say revenue increased by 3% from 2014 to 2015. You need to say that revenue improved by 3% from 2014 to 2015. Okay. You need to always indicate to the examiner that you understand whether an increase is a good thing or a bad thing because not all ratios increasing is necessarily a good thing. Okay. So please note, don't ever, don't ever use the words increase or decrease. The words that you use are the ratio has improved, the ratio has deteriorated. The ratio is better than the industry average or the ratio is worse than the industry average. Not it's higher or it's lower than the industry average. It's better, it's worse, it's improved, it's deteriorated, it's superior, it's inferior. You need to show the marker that you understand whether that increase or decrease is a good thing or a bad thing. Okay, so when you compare it to a benchmark, make sure you use the correct terminology. You will score so many marks if you just do that. Then, lastly, you need to give a reason. Now, 98% of the time, the reason is going to come directly from the question. So maybe revenue grew significantly from last year to this year, but they tell you in the question somewhere that they introduced a brand new product line. There's your reason. The company introduced a brand new product line, and that is obviously the reason for the significant improvement in revenue from last year to this year. 98% of the time, it comes from the question. And guys, honestly, the other 2% of the time where it comes from general knowledge, I wouldn't even worry about because you can get full marks without even going to that level. Okay. Focus on what they give you in the question. Use what they give you in the question. Okay. If there's nothing in the question, take a step back. What do I know? What is the current inflation rate? So inflation is sitting at around 5 6%. I obviously want to make sure revenue grows by more than inflation. Because if it grows by less than inflation, then it isn't really growing in real terms. So compare it to the inflation rate or something like that. But you're not expected to have specialist knowledge of any industry ever. You're expected to have any general knowledge that any living, breathing human being who is conscious and listens to the news every now and again knows about what's going on in the world. Okay. Not even excessively, guys. You don't have to listen to news reports day in, day out, endlessly. You just have to be consciously aware of what's going on in the world around you. Okay. And if you can do that, you can pass manic. You don't have to be a specialist. So that's what you're going to do. First, if we're looking at financial information, because we're going to look at non-financial just now. If we're looking at financial information, first you're going to calculate your ratio. And it's normally one marker ratio. So use that as a guideline. If it's quite a complex ratio, I'm going to interpret it. But even if I don't get to that, if I'm running out of time, I'm going to leave the interpretation. That's not where the marks lie. What I'm going to do after I've calculated my ratio is I'm going to compare it to something so that I can tell the examiner if it's better or worse. And then after that, I'm going to give a reason, which is 98% of the time going to come directly from the question. And I think the mistake that you guys make is you think, I can't use it because it's what they told me in the question. If they tell you something in the question, they want you to use it in your solution. So if something is sitting in the question, you must use it in your solution. Okay. Please, you must. Then, so that deals with financial information. Then if we have to analyze non-financial information, this has become very popular lately. For the level ones, it was in the 2014 exam, and for the level twos, it was in the 2015 exam. Okay. And this is the easiest thing you will ever come across, okay? This is the easiest thing you will ever see in a CTA paper. So I pray for all of you that it's there. What do you do when you've got non-financial information? Now, non-financial information, guys, can be looked at under two different headings. Social performance, which is anything to do with people, and environmental performance, which is obviously anything to do with the environment or the planet. Now, social performance, you're looking at things like what is their BEE rating? How many employees were hurt during work? How much money do you spend on training your employees? All of that kind of stuff, okay? How many employees resigned during the period? All of that. Environmental performance, you're looking at the amount of water and electricity, and you're looking at your CO2 emissions, or also very commonly referred to as greenhouse gases.
Now, bonus marks. This is, if you see this, guys, you know it's your day. Right, you're very lucky if you see this. There's three steps to your calculation. First, you're going to work out the movement. Okay, so what I mean over there, if they want you to look at environmental performance, they're going to tell you how much water they used last year and how much water they used this year. So you're going to work out the movement. And whenever you work out a movement, you take the current year, you subtract the prior year, and you divide by the prior year. So you work out that the amount of water they used this year decreased by 5%. Brilliant. Then you say in point two, is that good or bad? That means it's improved or it's deteriorated. So you say, has it improved, has it deteriorated? Obviously, if I'm using less water, that indicates improved performance. A whole mark, guys, just for saying that. For working out a basic movement, you get one mark, and you get another mark just for saying they used less water this year, so that shows improved performance. You get another mark at a CTA level. Then in point three, you have to give a reason. That's the structure that I want you to follow. That's the third thing you're going to do. So first, you work out a movement. Second, you say if it's better or worse, improved, deteriorated. Again, don't say increase or decrease. If you say the water has decreased, that doesn't show me that you know that that's a good thing. You need to say that it's improved. And then you give a reason. And again, all the reasons come from the question. Like in last year's paper for the level twos, they told you it was a hotel and they told you that they replaced all of the baths with showers. So because now in all of the hotels, they've got more showers instead of baths, they're using less water. That's the reason. Okay, given to you in the question. You do the same thing for the amount of money that they spend on training. Work out the movement. Maybe you see this year they spend more money on training their employees. So if they spend more money this year on training their employees, that means it's an improvement from last year. What is the reason? You go look in the question and somewhere in the question they tell you, this year they implemented a new training policy for their employees where they did this, this, and that. There's your reason. Okay, this is really so nice. Okay, but I won't harp on about it anymore. I think I'm killing you with that. But I really hope that you get it because obviously you guys can see how easy it is. One more thing that I just want to emphasize while we're sitting on ratios, guys, is the CO2 emission. So obviously that's the pollution that you're putting out into the atmosphere. So again, we want that to decrease. We want water consumption to decrease. We want electricity consumption to decrease. We want the CO2 emissions to decrease. Please note that another word for CO2 emissions is greenhouse gases. So if greenhouse gases increase, like it did in last year's paper, you can't say that that's a good thing. An increase in greenhouse gases is an increase in CO2 emissions, which means it's an increase in pollution, which is a bad thing. A lot of people said that an increase in greenhouse gases is a good thing because for some reason you think factories are pushing green gases into the atmosphere. There's no good gas. You don't get good gas, okay? Any gas that's going out into the atmosphere is bad, okay? Greenhouse gases, CO2 emissions, anything. You want all of that to be as low as possible. All right. And that is how you are going to approach the analysis of financial and non-financial information.